Welcome everybody. We'll give it a few minutes here to see everybody get logged in. Change my share here. So before uh, Durf comes on to go over a little bit more about the prospecting uh, booklet, just want to show you guys where you guys can access all this information. So I think everybody's familiar with uh, our trgrealestate.com website. Uh, you'll click on that agent login in the top right. Um, once you log in, and you'll see we have a list of everything that you guys need to access here. So like our TRG closing checklist, our training schedule, um, the TRG logo if you need it, a Microsoft Word document that's got the letterhead, um, your independent contractor's agreement that you guys signed when you first joined the company, and also our policies and procedures manual that was updated uh, last January. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of all these little PDF icons, you'll see that we have a section just for the prospecting and marketing on it. So you guys can see that here in the bottom. Uh, so when you click on the prospecting and marketing, you'll see on here we have our booklet that Dirk's gonna go over with you. That kind of gives you all the information that you need. Uh, we used to print these out, bind them up when we had in-person meetings, uh, but now you guys can download it right here. And um, we also added in a couple new items. So Tom Ferry, um, at the start of this pandemic, actually put together a virtual open house guide uh, so we'll go over that and also a business plan, uh, which is always great to do at the beginning of every year. Um, there's tons of them out there, so there's not one that's perfect, um, but the best thing is, is to write down your goals and everything that you want to do um, for that. So let me uh, jump over to the virtual open house so you guys can see. You guys can all download this uh, PDF, go through it all. Um, there might be an updated version at Tom Ferry's website currently. It kind of goes over how to set it up. So you have your objective, you know, what you want to set up, the kind of equipment. Uh, we always recommend using Zoom um, for it since that's the easier one for everybody to access. And then also additional stuff on here is you can you know, pay for more storage, get all that set up, uh, as well as DocuSign, um, who to do email marketing and all of that. I didn't know if you want to just continue to do it. So that's all for that. And um, also how to do the actual virtual showing. So it's kind of like a uh, walkthrough on how you can set up everything, do a pre-run before you do it. Um, they always recommend starting outside on here, you can see walking into the property um, for it. And we can remind the seller that they need to stay quiet, you know, they can mute themselves. Um, but they could also be there to give comments on it, which I think would be a great way to kind of get testimonials from that, that uh, seller. Um, that's all listed here. Showing days, how to set everything up, different ways that you can do it. So if you guys don't want to use Zoom, you got FaceTime, if anybody has an Apple uh, phone or I think it's Google Voice, uh, if you have Android to do any kind of video call. Um, you also have, you know, something to answer on your computer, you have WhatsApp, there's lots of different uh, technologies out there to uh, use. Uh, they have a nice little checklist for you to have that all ready beforehand also. Actual showings, this is a long, you know, brought up checklist, kind of gives you information what to do. Here's how you plan that virtual open house. So just like you do a regular one, you know, with door knocking, instead you're gonna do uh, some sort of advertisement, whether it's mailing it out, uh, doing it on social media with posts or setting up the event. Um, that makes it real easy um, for you guys to get everything set up for it. So that's the whole kind of like quick rundown for uh, how to set up a virtual open house for it. Let's see. And we got Durf in here now. Let me add him as a participant. All right. 
So then uh, the other thing that uh, we have listed on here is the Tom Ferry uh, business plan. Um, this one's obviously from uh, 2018. So uh, don't mind the, the dates on it, but the information can be the same. Kind of goes through how to set up and plan your year as you're going forward for it. Uh, so we get through the minute information here. The first page they here, we kind of have just like your business review. So this is where it's up to you to go back and you know, find out what, how many appointments you did, how many transactions, uh, what your sales volume was, what your gross commission was. So that's stuff that you would fill in. A number of buyers, leases, referrals. So this is really just information for you to write down um, as your kind of like reference point as you go through this. Uh, I think it's like a, about a 10 page uh, form to fill out. Now kind of like what your goals are, what you want to fill out on here as well. Um, we also have life goals, so it's a little bit more uh, deep into uh, uh, physical uh, relationships, finances, you know, how much you want to save, you want uh, spiritual, um, that way you're meditating, going to church, whatever you prefer to do spiritually. Um, then what actually drives your uh, business here, you want to six. And then you get into more uh, data that you'll have to actually put in individually. And this is, you know, like where your lead source is. And the best thing about writing all this down is you'd have that information to look back at over the years to see what was working and what wasn't working. Um, so that's kind of like the goal with um, this whole broken down uh, spreadsheet for you guys to fill out. Um, I believe when you download it into Adobe Acrobat or Reader, you can actually fill in um, that information as well. I think that's uh, most of it on here, more marketing. And you can see it goes on listing more and more information. There's a lot of one page uh, forms that are out there as well to make it a little bit easier, but the idea is just to have some sort of ref reference uh, point for you to go back and forth. Um, and then lastly on that page, we have our prospecting booklet. So this one I'm going to uh, hand over to Dirk to go through and see if he's uh, there or not. Yeah, I'm 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 here. How are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. We just don't see your video. Oh. Oh shoot! You know, um, because I'm logged I'm logged in to another Zoom meeting, Danny. Oh, you can, you're not able to see it? You put me in the other room, but it's okay. As long as you guys can hear me. Yep. Uh, uh, is everybody here? Does everybody hear me okay? Uh, and, All as well. Okay, thank you, uh, Shireen. Uh, you know, since we only have seven, eight people here, it looks like I, I've got some real veterans. Hi, Carol. Uh, and, and, and Mary and a couple, David, you're got a couple of newer agents. Um, can you unmute yourself and kind of give me an idea as to what you're doing for prospecting or what you're looking for? Um, I've got a lot of material in here. I got a couple hours of material. You have access to this booklet on our website and it goes through all the different types of prospecting. But you know, one thing I've found in my, in my teaching over the years is that um, very few agents are ever going to start making cold calls using the phone. So I don't want to, I, and I've got a great script for that, uh, but I don't want to spend time on that if that's not one of your goals. So uh, if you can take a couple minutes, maybe for each of you, if you can kind of give me an idea as to how I can help you in your prospecting, I'll be glad to gear this more towards you personally. Um, I've got Michelle on top of my list. Are you, are you, can you uh, unmute yourself, Michelle? Hi. Hi. So what, what are your plans? Okay, this, um, this year, um, after my birthday, um, I'll be eligible to start back working again. And so I am gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna work my way back up. Um, I'm gonna start myself back off as a new agent and I'm gonna work myself back up. Um, I've been trying to keep in, in focus on your, um, in all your um, meetings and going, trying to go, and trying to go through some of the uh, materials 
and so that I can um, build myself back up, not, you know, because I've been out of the business for a while. Even though I've been in your office, I have not done no work. Okay, well, and, I, I appreciate that. So you're more in the uh, education mode right now. Right. Okay, all right, well, hang on. We'll, we'll give you lots to, lots to learn about here. Uh, David, you're on? Or, yeah, David. Hello, everybody. Um, so right now, I've just been reaching out to family and friends in terms of representing them. Um, I have a nine to five job and it's pretty busy. Um, have about two of my single friends who are looking to take advantage of the low interest rates for condominiums. I have a friend who just got married and they have a big family. So they're looking for a house and they're looking to take advantage of the interest rates as well. And I have an aunt that is looking to retire and move out of state. She owns a home and she's looking to sell it. So I've just been working family, family and friends for the most part. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, Carol? Uh, you gotta un unmute yourself there, Carol. I know, okay. I was talking to myself. Hi. Um, you know, when I first started, it was- I can't remember back that far. When I first started, <laughs> I, I had a door knocking area and, and, I, and then I would mail to them mail and I did some phone calls to them. Now, all of my farming is through social media and my website and other platforms that I've had. Um, turning all of that over is a little challenging sometimes because you're not always, I'm in one lead generation company and you call the lead and they don't answer, even though that's an, it's a good number. So it's just a matter of just keep doing a few things. I never had the privilege of having family here. So I was meeting strangers all the time. Of course, we did op I did open houses, which are a little different now. That's also an option, opportunity to meet, meet somebody new. Um, and, and really, I would like to refocus on my database. And my and how many clients, uh, Carol, uh, do you have in your database now? How many? Well, my database includes like you, right? So I'm thinking that um, the database that goes out through my email blast is about 2,500. And I probably have out of that Ashley Pass clients, you figure about 250 that either are A alive, still willing to get listen to me, maybe in, 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 in the state or outside of the state. So, and that's after, I'm in my 41st year, guys, so. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> Carol, I'm in, I'm in the same boat because uh, I, I have about the same number of my, my past clients in, in that 250. Yeah. And, and that will yeah. support us. You know, there's always enough clients that you're going to get your few transactions with that. Uh, you know, looking back, and I'm sure you, you too, you, we wish we would have had kept better records so that our database would be about 500, uh, because then we would probably be busier than we want to be uh, with, with that with that base. I'm I'm impressed that you have 2,500 though on your on your email list. That's that's great. The email list also includes um, leads. It includes um, maybe some realtors that I know, um, uh, you know, some uh, affiliates. But it's also, I mean, I uh, the pro part of my biggest challenge is that since so many of these people came into my system before email that I don't have email addresses for all of my past clients. Yeah, I, I, I understand, I'm, I'm old too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why yesterday when we, we were watching um, about the um, uh, HomeBot, I've been introduced to HomeBot before and I was debating because it's just another program that I have to futz with and do something with when I'm trying to clean up whatever I have and when when it was when Danny suggested to go back, you know, last year or go back the last three years, I know I have their emails. You see, right? <laughs> so then I thought, let me see what I could do to go back four years. Now I haven't done, started this project because I'm trying to do some other things right now, but um, I have several platforms that I'm involved in that um, 
basically a marketing for me. I, I now have somebody who's doing an ISA. So it's just, I'm trying, I'm spending money on things that I'm hoping will work. That's all I can tell you. And, well, for, for, and I, I, always, I appreciate you. One thing I always remembered is you do have to spend money to make money. And that's really hard when you don't have any money, but you have to spend some money, whether it's on, you know, creating a, uh, a new video or something is spending time and money now so much it's free you can go on facebook you can go on twitter you can freely do things you can do a video which is your phone you already have it but we didn't have that before so we started different platforms that did cost money even um constant contact is how i do my email blast instead of bomb bomb or mailchimp that was the first thing i got introduced to and i haven't changed i pay for my top producer which I've had since Top Producer 5.0, which is like when some of our young people haven't even been around. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that you've had that because I've always looked to you for that Top Producer uh, referrals, and that's yeah. probably been at least 25, 30 years. Yes, uh, yeah. That where uh, us older agents, you know, we had to learn Excel and uh, in order to keep some type of records of our of our database. So yeah. I've always been impressed that you've had that. Yeah, mm -hmm. th thank you for joining us. And, and, and this is where uh, David and Michelle, this is where you want to be uh, and, and not have to take, like us, not have to take decades, uh, but you should be able to get this database uh, within, within your first year if you're working full time, I would say a couple of years, maybe on a part time basis. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, uh, today. Um, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Any, you good? Uh, and then Elena, I've got Elena on here. Can you unmute yourself there, Elena? Oh, okay, maybe. I'm going to move down to Mary. Okay, uh, Mary, Mary Warner. Hello, Mary, can you hear me? We've got you signed in. Well, how about David and me? <laughs> I talked to David already. Um, who else haven't I talked to here? Me. Uh, Shireen, you're on? Yeah, I'll turn on video, but I'm warning you guys. I feel like crap, so I look like it. <laughs> good morning. Um, well, good uh, afternoon. Huh? Good afternoon. It's good to see you guys. Um, okay, so first of all, I cannot say enough how much I related with what Carol was saying because that's how I always got my business and I, I went into a brand new market I knew no one uh, I guess like Carol did we have family um, you know at some point and I know Michelle is starting over but when I moved up north for 15 years I didn't know a soul and um, so the the way that I got started was uh, date myself floor time which was awesome. Who remembers floor time? I remember floor time. Floor time rocked. I got a lot of work that way, but it was also in the early 2000s. And so we were taking orders, right? Kind of like uh, commercial was for me in the 90s. So that was one way, but we don't have that available anymore. Open houses, huge for me as well, especially that I do prefer buyers. Again, Carol, same thing. And door knocking. I was door knocking until the pandemic hit. I'm super old fashioned. I was door knocking in Carson. I am reaping benefits from that. God willing, I have a closing in a couple of weeks. So um, indeed, all of my old school sources are gone. There is no more floor time. We have cell phones, you know, the signs actually have our cell phone number on them now. And, um, you know, so I'm looking for different ways when, especially because I do the law now. So this is, you know, Kind of unrelated to it and almost a side thing but i don't want it to be because i've been doing it for 26 years but i know that one way to get to garner business is the simple uh just remind, remember to let people know that you're still working with a lot of people up north just because i had moved back here for like the first couple of years i lost business because they didn't know i was still working and you know this stuff uh you and lauren are getting referral checks for me you know often enough from my work up north because I had finally 
went on social media and like told people, I'm still working, you guys, I'm just down here, but I'm still working for you up there, you know? Um, and a lot of them thought, oh, okay, well, she went and became a lawyer and that was it, but that's not true. I'm doing this, you know? And I mean, two, both of them. And so uh, what I can say is just let people know you're doing it, always selling. You can't enough uh, remind people that you do this. They forget, they forget, especially because we have flexible schedules. So we're not in this like work grind where they're always reminded of what we're doing, you know? And so, you know, and, and of course, just keeping up with all the new technology, which I really, you know, I try not to resent that, but because we can't touch people and knock on doors and everything, we've got to learn how to do it, you know, in a way that people will respond. And a lot more people prefer automated now anyways. And that's weird for me, you know, they, especially those millennials, they scare the hell out of me. Those it, It's weird. It's weird for all of us, Sharina. <laughs> I know. And that's why I'm like, you know, and, and that's why the, the lawyering is still like really old fashioned and we still use legal pads and pencils and you know what I mean? So I'm like, woo, but no matter what, real estate is like such a blessing and it's a beautiful thing and I don't want to get out of it. So that's why I'm here. I have to reinvent myself. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. Thank Thanks you. Okay, so uh, Mary, I got Mary Warner, I got Jay and Michelle. Um, oh, I talked to Michelle. Um, anybody else want to comment? Daisy? Mary. I don't know if Mary's on here, if she's, if she's just on her phone or not. Uh, no, I'm here. I had oh. set my privacy. To, I, had, I had turned my microphone off, so I had to turn it back on again. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. It's going by fast, huh? <laughs> uh, so I know you're another another veteran. Um, what what are you looking for as far as your prospecting and and anything? That you um, share? I'm always open to new ideas, you know, because I've been farming for 16 years, which I do get business from there, even if it's not in my farm. It, it can be indirectly from my farm, um, which happened to me this year. Um, but I also as much as I hate social media, I'm on there and I do get deals from social media, just um, like she was saying, because people remember that I'm a realtor just by being on there. Right. So, um, but I'm, I'm always, I always come to you, you know, I always sign up for your classes because I'm always open. You always have to be open to learning new things and, and learning new ideas. And Danny's HomeBot thing yesterday is amazing. I mean, I got, I was so excited. I jumped online um and started sending it to my clients immediately and somebody that i've been talking to that's kind of on the fence about selling responded and said oh my gosh i love that uh i got your email i love the app and um they're gonna have me probably list their home uh in february oh great excellent and um so it's so simple to use so i sent the invite to jonathan he closed two loans for me, two of my buyers last year. He, by the way, everybody, he's excellent, does an amazing job. I've used different mortgage brokers and um, all my clients loved him. And, you know, I just keep giving him business. I don't usually work with buyers, but lately I've, I've had some buyers. So we, cl we just closed it. We're closing all our deals right at 30 days. And um, he's, right. his team, his team's done an amazing job. And uh, so he jumped on my home bot thing. And so now my buyers will automatically be able to just go to him instead of me having to give them, you know, his information. Okay. They're going to have, they'll have Almost. his information. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm excited about home bot. I'm all for it. I'm going to send it to every buyer, seller, new lead, old lead people in my farm, people that are in my farm thinking about selling and, um, you know, uh, I sent it to my son. He tested it out. He thought it was amazing. And he's a millennial and uh, he was very impressed with it. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Mary. Well, yeah, I know, I know she's been, she's been farming for, for quite a while. So we've, we've got a real cross section here. So I'm going to kind of divert from this uh, booklet that you all have uh, access to, and it has all the basics in there uh, of, of prospecting. And I'm going to kind of um, uh, use some of the veterans that we have and kind of give you an overview of what I think is the best for your career, especially for, for you new guys that are starting out. Uh, first off, um, 
the social media is the way to do the communication. I mean, whether that's in the in that HomeBot, the new tech applications that we have, or uh, setting something up that's a, a set it and forget it type of um, contact to your to your database. Um, uh, Danny also does a, a, a great uh, workshop just on social media. So I'm going to let him do that on another date and, and get you details on that. So how you can improve your communication uh, using social media. Um, that is definitely the way to, to, to go and save money versus having to do newsletters and mailings and other stuff that we've done over the, over the years. Um, and, and getting back to your ultimate goals in, in real estate and prospecting is you, you want to get to have that database and whether it's the, the 500 uh, clients or the 250, uh, I like to tell our, my new agents that I wanna get them to their, their, get their first 100 people. Because when you look at the numbers, when you, when you have 100 people that know you and like you, uh, the statistics state uh, what I used to quote in my classes that you know people have moved every three to five years. Well, now it's every ten years. That's how it's, the industry has changed. Uh, so even using ten years as an average, if you have hundred people in your database that really know you, you're going to have ten transactions uh, out of that. Um, and when you consider commissions nowadays are typically in that $20,000 range, uh, that's a good livelihood with just 100 clients. So you can imagine when you get up to 300, 400, 500 clients, it's just a matter of maintaining that database and maintaining that contact. So that should be your ultimate goal uh, down there is just to develop that, that database. And in my booklet here, I have, I have ways you can do it by either making phone calls, uh, by using uh, farm, by uh, farming. And what I do um, for, my, for my farming, this Danny's showing you here is the uh, kind of the basics of, of setting up a farm when you're going door to door. But most agents now that I've seen over these last like, 10 years, they've been doing, um, they've been cherry picking their farm. So it's, it's different. It's where you go out, uh, you may pick an, instead of an area of 500 homes, you may pick an area of a couple thousand homes and just try to get that hundred, that database of a hundred people that you can talk to. Uh, because one of the faults of the old school uh, farming is that when you, when you walk through a farm, the odds are you're only going to talk to, if, if it's 500 homes, you might talk to 50 people in 30 days and you go through it the next month, it's another 50 people and most of those are the same. And what happens is at the end of the year is you may have 10 or 20 people that really know who you are and know what you're doing, but the others don't. So there's more efficient ways uh, to do that. And I'll, I'll throw out a couple of examples. Um, uh, John Hunter was one of our top producing agents at, at TRG. And this was about six or seven years ago. He bought into that, uh, what's it called? Zip, uh, smart, smart Zip or smart, smart Zip. And it was a software program. It, it cost him $500 a month to subscribe to this uh, software. And it's basically, it's a farming uh, a program and what they would do is they would take a, a farm area of maybe 2,000 homes and with their analytics they would tell the agent what the odds are of each of those homeowners selling within the next 12 months and and so they would give the the real estate agent every day 10 to 20 leads to go out and give a business card to these to these people. Uh, and John Hunter, just to give you some background, he did some mortgage lending for a while, um, uh, made a living at that, but not, not enough, got into real estate, worked at, at TRG his first year, he just closed a couple of transactions. 
uh, and then he says, hey, I got to do better than this, and he subscribed to this service. Uh, what set John apart from most people when you use this lead generating service is that he did it religiously. Every morning, the first thing that he would do is pull down this list of the 10 to 20 people that he would, was supposed to go out and meet. He would go out, knock on their door, give them his business card. Uh, I, I don't think John ever made a flyer. I don't think he ever had a brochure on who he was. All he had was business cards. And so it was very low cost, low tech in, in what he was doing because he was going out and meeting these, and meeting these people. Uh, but he did this religiously. And uh, in fact, he has our record. I think in, in one month, he closed six or seven uh, transactions. He did about 500,000 in commissions in 10 months. He had to take off two months because his dad got ill up from out of state. Uh, and he owes it all to that, to that uh, uh, Zip uh, Logic uh, uh, software program. Uh, and how that's evolved is that now uh, the title companies use those analytics and just going through Robert at no cost, you can get this information. So if you give Robert uh, your, your farm data, like it's uh, either streets or zip codes or however you wanna do it. Um, and, and instead of choosing 500 homes, which is the typical size of a farm, is you've gotta do a larger database, maybe a couple thousand homes and just hit those uh, people that are on the top 10 that uh, come out as most likely to, to sell. And just to give you an idea, the, the, the database that they can pull from is uh, you know, deaths, divorces, bankruptcies, um, how long they've lived there, what their equity position is, and they can compare this and, and more, all of this data, and, and it's pretty accurate. So the idea is, then you're, you're just focusing on uh, maybe 100 uh, different people each uh, month to go out and visit and to get to point to where they know and like you and will call you if, you're, if they're interested in a market analysis or uh, and potentially selling their home. Uh, so this, this shows you, this is on what, what program this is in, it was like Robert's oh, this is package. okay. So this is from uh, from Robert. This is what he calls his smart farm. Um, and I know it's difficult to see this, but but it's available uh, through through Robert No, and, and you can pick out any any area that you want to uh, that you want to work in. So if you're if you're thinking about going that farming route and you're new in the business, uh, this is what I would do rather than going around knocking on doors. And I, you know, I mentioned this because in my neighborhood. We, we have two agents that farm that, and they're just handing out flyers and dropping stuff off that they've been doing for 10 years. And they get, uh, they make a living at it, but they're not meeting the people. And the key is, is that you've got to have, you, you got to press the flesh and you got to have those, those warm contacts so you can get up to that database of the 250, 300 people um, that, that know you and like you. So that's, that's your ultimate goal. Um, you guys have questions or anything, yell, raise your hand, chat, do something, because otherwise I'll just keep going on here. So um, again, this is just for those um, that are farming or if you want to improve uh, your, your farming techniques, I would definitely focus on these hot clients on this, on this probability score that uh, uh, Robert knows uh, program lists. Uh, for, for those agents that are, are new and may have a database or you're working family and friends, um, first off is you, you should work that sphere of influence. There's no reason for you to go out and do cold calling and, and knocking on doors when you have 100 people on your Christmas mailing list that already know you. Uh, you should focus on that, spend all of your efforts uh, on that, getting, get focusing so that those people will know, uh, trust and like you for, and call you when they have real estate questions. Uh, and there's lots of follow-up material uh, to, to use, not only this uh, HomeBot, but there's other stuff that uh, is available online for free or, or almost no cost. Um, 
yeah, I'm not going to go through the expired listings and the for sale by owners and stuff because I don't think that's that's going to focus. That's going to hit our uh, our group that we have here. Yeah. Um, uh, one, one of the things I started off. Uh, this is this is decades ago at, at Frederick Realty. Uh, the uh, AT and T. Remember when AT and T used to own all their phones? They they uh, offered. Uh, save this, Danny. Uh, they they offered uh, this study on getting leads by by using the telephone, and if you remember, Carol, in our in our early days, uh, everybody was told, "Oh, you got to make the those hundred phone calls every day." And yeah, and, and you know, it, it took a hundred calls to get one to say yes, right? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot, a lot better ways to do that now. And what I've seen in my decades uh, for successful agents are those that focus on one thing, one thing, like Mary, for example, in her farming and Carol uh, with, her, with her database. Um, uh, there's agents out there that just focus on beachfront properties. Uh, they just focus on condos. You know, you become the condo queen or the condo king so that your name gets out there and that you're the best at that. Uh, I know another agent that just does horse properties. Um, so you, you, you want to narrow your focus and be the best in whatever field that is. Um, don't, uh, I know when you're, when you're new and when I teach this uh, to my new agents, you know, I, I try to get them out there to try everything. But if you happen to like doing for sale by owners, for example, then you should focus on that and do nothing but for sale by owners. And because nobody out there that I know is, is working those. Same as expired listings. You know, you'll have agents that may call once or twice, but they don't do um, the marketing that's necessary to, to focus on just doing expired listing. You know, we, I call it guerrilla marketing. So uh, it's uh, typically on a for sale by owner, you know, if an agent even stops by a for sale by owner, They'll stop by and give a business card and maybe make an additional call. Well, when you go through my material, uh, you're making a contact daily for those first two weeks to that for sale by owner, because that's all you're doing. All you're doing is for sale by owners. That's what you're focusing on. on and you, you want to get that listed and they are going to list. It's just whether or not it's going to be with you or somebody else. So if you can focus and be the best in, in whatever way that you prospect, um, you, you will be very, very successful. Um, okay, any, any other questions or comments? I wanna, I, I wanna hit on this uh, daily activity graph uh, because this is what's helped me over the years uh, more, than, more than anything else, and especially in, in working with new agents. Um, your goal on a daily basis when you're out there prospecting no matter what your prospecting is, is to make those contacts to be able to add to your, to your database. So how many contacts do you have to make on a daily basis as a new agent to start developing this? Any, any comments? What do you think? I, I always, I flash back to when I was first in the business, you know, I, I was working full time and I went two months and I hadn't had a transaction took me three months to get my first, my first transaction. And because you're your own boss, it's like, gee, you know, am I doing it what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, I'm going out there, I'm knocking doors, I'm making phone calls, I'm doing everything. But you just don't know uh, because there's nobody, you know, telling you that, hey, yeah, you know, out of boy, you're, you're doing the right thing. Uh, so I relied on this Tom Hopkins uh, chart. Uh, and he does a point, and if you can look at this sideways, this is, this is listed for 30 days. Each day, you give yourself points for contacts that you make. Um, uh, if you see a for sale by owner, that's one point. Under day, day one, you put a point, or whatever it is, and then go back to that other page there. Uh, and then as you go down this list, uh, for whatever that you do. If you're holding open house, uh, you get a point for each contact that you make, you get a point for a listing appointment. Uh, he was real big on uh, handwriting cards and thank you cards. Uh, at the end of each day, he would always write 10 thank you cards. 
So that's 10, 10 points right there. Um, uh, and, send, and send those out. Um, I get a kick out of this. If you get a listing reduction of $500, I mean, that's really nothing nowadays, but um, it gets you to add a zero to that. Uh, you, you get a point for that. Uh, so looking at this, um, it, it gives you a, a guide as to how many points you're doing on a daily basis. And when you look at your past month's activities, you'll see some trends. You know, are you getting four or five points a day or are you getting 40 or 50 points a day? And I think we all know that if you're getting 40 or 50, you're going to be in that top, uh, you're going to be a top producer. And, and so this is his um, uh, judgment of your points. <laughs> yeah, 40, 40 is, is the high here. And he considers anything from 30 to 40. You are the million dollar pro here. Unfortunately, most of us, and I would say you know, 99% of us here at TRG, we're down here in this danger level. You know, they may do an open house, and in fact, pre-pandemic, they may do an open house once a month, or they may have some showings, uh, but they're probably getting that five to 10 contacts on a daily basis. And, and that's why statistically 90% of those that join real estate fail in their first two years. It's because they don't make these, they don't make these contacts. Uh, so this is a good way that you can judge yourself for that full-time agent uh, as, to what you, as to what you should be doing. What's that next page on there? Is that... uh, okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, this, this is actually from back in the 70s here. Uh, the, the area one, two, three, and four, this shows four different agents. Uh, that first agent in area one is uh, looking good. Uh, they're getting 30 points some days or taking a couple of days off, uh, but that's, that is an excellent agent, in, at least in my book. And then you can see area three, that's the million dollar pro. Uh, next one, next one up on that area three is they're getting the 40 points and off the chart. And as I mentioned, unfortunately, uh, this is most of us here in this area four, where um, you know we're lucky to get more than than a handful of contacts each each day. So so again, this is on the on the on the broader scope. This is what you should be focusing on. Whether you're doing for sale by owners, you know, farming, uh, uh, expired listings, or or whatever, um, you you need to judge your workload and to see how successful you're going to be. If you recall, Danny started this out uh, with making goals and using that uh, ferry uh, uh, program. That's excellent. Yeah, for, on the coaching. Uh, this this the excellent material in here, especially for the new agent, as to as to set those goals. Uh, you know, I'm happy if you just write a one-page goal letter every year as to uh, what you uh, what the income is that you want to make, the uh, number of transactions, be specific, the number of, of days that you're going to work, your vacations, be as specific as you can in in writing these in writing these goals. I have a stack of them that I look back at um, and it, it makes me laugh, uh, but it, it also shows uh, how focused I was compared to most agents um, in, in doing what you have to do, at least knowing what you have to do in order to be successful. You know, then, then when you become the veterans like us, uh, you, we, we know what we have to do. It's just a question of whether or not we're gonna do it or not. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm hoping that that's where you, that's where you all get to. All right. So let me open this up. Uh, questions to you guys? Anything? Uh, any comments? So I have a comment or concern about expanding my sphere of influence. Um, it's been mainly my friends and family, as you know, Durf, where I work. I could expand it to where I work. However, I'm a little concerned. It might open a floodgate. <laughs> and some legal issues with what I do at a uh, state agency. So that's like my kind of concern. 
Yeah, well, again, I can't answer for your for your database there, but for people that you have a personal relationship with, I would definitely include them into your uh, emails. And then you've got to set up a program to where, and for, this is for your family also. And it, it's not where, hey, do you want to sell your house or do you want to buy a house? It's like, uh, you know, interest rates are trending up or interest rates are trending down. Uh, the, the market looks great over the next few years. Just, uh, and there's lots of information out there. CAR has lots of these e-magazines uh, that, that you can use. Uh, and the idea is just to educate these buyers. So the idea is you're kind of bringing them into the fold. It's not a hard sell, uh, but again, I can't answer for you. I don't know, um, I, I'm guessing it's, you should only be able to uh, solicit those that you have a relationship with. Okay. Okay. I would expand that list as, as much as possible. Um, I, I had an agent, um, again, this is, this is years ago. She, she was at, um, I think it was Honeywell when they were closing up. Uh, and she, she was in the, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, home, the resources, uh, HR. Yeah. She was in the HR. And so she got to see people when they were leaving, giving them this back in there giving them golden handshakes and everything. I sold her house and she says, oh, I'm gonna get my real estate license. And so she got her license with me. Um, she was always busy with her work, uh, but she got these leads. And I said, hey, you know, give me the lead. I'll split it 50-50. These are typically people that wanna sell their house. And I'd be glad to give you half the commission. You don't have to do anything. Uh, just, just give me that lead. Uh, over a period of about two years, I probably had a transaction a month from her, uh, just from her leads that she knew from her work. Okay. So, um, they, they, you know, it's, it's crazy for her to go out and try to knock doors and do other stuff when she's got this right at her fingertips. So uh, if you can focus on that, um, that, that's that's what I would do. I mean, just, uh, again, I, I can't answer for your... Uh, um, well... Kind of my approach has been I've been handing out my business cards whenever I meet or have interactions personally um, about you know work to faculty, students, uh, other people on campus. So I've been handing it out, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, you just got to go the next step and get their card, get their business card, so that you can actually uh, capture them into your database. Okay. And you always do like a referral or a TRG team if he wants to take other people. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and work on an education uh, basis where you're going to educate them on a monthly basis. Yeah, Carol. David, do you have a, have you created a platform for a database? No, I have not. I mean, it's just basically, you know, old, um, just paper and pen with family and okay. friends. Okay. Not even yeah. Excel sheet. I mean, I'm really good at Excel, but I haven't even put it in an Excel sheet yet, so... And he knows he knows how to do it. It's just a matter of, of doing it. Uh, these these software programs like Top Producer are just incredible because they can they can automate all of that work uh, for you. Go ahead, Carol. So, um, I think through the board, don't you get Lion Desk? Isn't that a isn't that a CRM? Learning it. I mean, yeah. Again, yeah. it's just okay. uh, as Danny says, it's just a matter of, of learning how to use it. Right. Okay. And all of these, all of these database programs are like that. If you really like your Excel, then do it. But you need to be able to take that to the next step where you take your email. You need to be able to take those emails, email addresses, and then create some kind of an email blast, if you want to call it. Okay. Where you, where you create something that maybe uh, once a month or once every two weeks, you're sending them something that has to do with real estate or has to do with you know, a specific property or, or gosh, I saw this property and here's a photo and do you know anyone who, and, and then you can take that into your social media because your social media, you do a business page on Facebook and then you do a personal page. You can do your Instagram page, which might be the best start. Start with your Instagram, which goes to your business page, and then you share it with your personal page. So whatever you're doing, you can do that. I'm not great at this. It's I'm honestly, I, I wish I had a 16 year old in my back pocket. I'm doing, I'm doing the best 
they can. Yeah, but and, and the, the number one thing, the same thing, so. uh, David, is when you, when you get this software, you, it has to be automatic. It has to be automated so that you don't have to go in there on a, whether you're sending it out bi-weekly or, or monthly to where it's done automatically. Because we know that if you had to send out, if you had to go in and actually send out newsletters every month, it ain't going to happen uh, uh, every month. I mean, things happen. So that's what's great about this home bot. And that's what's great about a lot of the software that's out there is that once you get the, the numbers and you put that and you make up that database, those contacts will, will automatically be uh, uh, contacted uh, uh, based, based on how you set it up. So that, and especially when you're starting out, that's, that's what you want to do. So yeah, so I guess my next step is creating a system and finding a platform to implement that system, so. Yeah, and there's lots out there and we can help you. Uh, you know, call us, Danny, Carol, myself. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll be glad to get you set up in that. Um, uh, but the uh, using that Excel is a way to start, at least get starting that uh, list of, the, of your contacts. Yes. Another question. Uh, Mary? Hey, yeah, Jerf. Um, I've been talking with Jonathan and he said that HomeBot wants to charge him $200 a month for him to be my sponsor. Well, um, uh, it, it's funny because I just I was going to bring that up with uh, David. Um, check with um, uh, Jonathan because you know he he teams up with me on on an email blast just to our agents, mm -hmm. uh, and he probably already has software that if you give him clients that he can set it up to where it's an automatic monthly contact just about financing, and so that makes a great you know third party. A resource. Oh, just give him my client's emails. Yeah, I usually have my clients contact him, but I kind of liked how they were going to contact him through HomeBot, and now they're wanting him to pay two hundred a month. And if we can get twenty to thirty agents on Charity using HomeBot, then it would make sense for him to use that in a different platform. So I mean, we can talk with him and see. Yeah, we'll we'll work that out. I would start out with the with your freebies. Uh, okay. Twenty five. Yeah. Or even uh, for for twenty bucks, it's you can get up to five hundred, right? Yeah, I, I would start out with that, uh, but then supplement that with uh, Jonathan's emails because he I don't know if you've been getting his emails. He's got oh, no, I I get all that, but I want Homebot to be connected to him because they're already going to be on there. Yeah. I mean, he he could pay it and write it off every year, but yeah, I mean, I'm giving him all my buyers, and he's already done right. two, right. so. I mean, I think it's kind of ridiculous they're charging that, but I guess they got to get money somehow. Yeah. Well, my point is, is that if you, if you're whatever software program you're in, whether it's HomeBot or another type of uh, media that goes out to your clients once a month, uh, you can also jump on his back and have a second email that goes out every month that just talks about uh, uh, real estate loans and it'll have your picture and Jonathan's picture. I know. But, I don't want to bombard my clients with emails. <laughs> I just don't. Well, I don't think After, twice, twice a month is... Uh, it's going from Jonathan. Yeah, no, it's sure. just that they get so many other ones. I don't even like how I get so many. I just like... What I liked about HomeBot is that they automatically hook him up with my client immediately. It's not right. like they got to go check their email. Right, right. All right, we'll, we'll work on that. And again, at, at some point, I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to get enough uh, agents that are that are on that to, to get that fee down. If all the agents are clicking the link to Jonathan and he sees the benefit, I'm sure he will he'll add that to his uh, database also. Yeah. Uh, if I have to, I'll split the cost with them because um, people yeah, are well, lazy. People are people are lazy, Dirk. They don't want to click on 50 emails, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. All right. Other other questions, comments? Okay, guys, anything else before we sign off here? Thank you. Thank you for attending. Again, uh, for those basics on, on prospecting, check out that booklet. Uh, and if you if you want to get into farming and not doing knocking doors, I, I actually have a file cabinet full of stuff. I have textbooks okay. on just farming. I have cassette tapes. We have, uh, Carol, I mean, we've got thousands and thousands of dollars of um, uh, agents that have just they have done nothing other than farming. So there's a lot of information out, out here. Uh, use us. Uh, you've got a lot of experience here in the office and we'll be glad to, we'll be glad to help. All right, guys, make it a great day. Talk to you soon.